Oh, hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the Cheddar Chateau. We're back with a Star Sector tutorial about refitting your ships. As a quick disclaimer, this tutorial is just the basics of refitting. If you're looking for the exact stuff to put on your ships and how to steamroll space terries, then this video is just not what you're looking for. And if you're an expert, then I can literally teach you nothing. You are a master and I will become your Padawan. So you expert cats, just drop a like on this video so the younglings can find it and go change your name to Chad, ride a unicorn shirtless through the galaxy and drip that swag sauce on some path or scum. So anyways, let's begin, shall we? So here we are in our refit screen. You can get there from coming to a planet, going into the trade goods and pressing the R key. And that will open up this bad boy for you where you can change everything, all the loadouts on your ship. So first off, let's start with what I think is the most important thing, the run simulation button. This is where you can take your newly refitted ship and test it out in the galactic matrix with zero consequences. If you cats take away one thing from this video, take away run and simulations. You can take your ship and run it against any other ship in the game to see how it'll operate. So if you're trying to kill space Terries, you can test how you'll do. If you're trying to kill Redactids, you can test that too. Oh, that didn't end very well. Now, each ship will have these ordnance points up here. The amount you get depends on the ship. Bigger ships get more, while smaller ships get less. And everything you add onto your ship, whether it's weapons, capacitors, vents, or hull mods, will cost a certain amount of ordnance points. So you'll need to kind of balance out what you put on your ship and stay within your ordnance point limit. Now you can build in mods onto your ship using story points to make them not cost any OP, but we won't be really getting into that right now. Okay, so moving on to flux. This is what generates when you're firing certain weapons or taking damage to your shields. Now you can add flux capacitors with Dr. Emmett Brown, which will increase your total flux capacity. As you can see right there, it's going up and down as I add them which will allow you to stay in the fight longer before needing to vent. Or you can add flux vents, which will allow you to more quickly vent all of that built up flux, making your flux dissipation right here go up much higher. Now, as a good rule of thumb, if you look right here, you have shield flux per second, which is how much flux your shields are generating when they're raised. And you also have your weapon flux per second, which is when you're firing most weapons, not all of them, but most of them. This will be the flux per second that uh, continuous firing will do. And also your shield flux per damage. So every time you take some damage, you'll get this much flux. Now the, the rule, it's not necessarily a fully golden rule. It's just like a maybe a tarnished golden rule. If you add these two up, you want them to be less than your flux dissipation here. So let's see, we have 508 plus 160, that's uh, uh, 668. So for my flux dissipation, I would not want to go below uh, 668. Now again, that's just a general rule of thumb. It's not the, um, oh, it's not the ultimate extreme rule because there are some strategies where these just don't stink and matter whatsoever. And if you're a good pilot, you can dip in, dip out, you know, vent as needed kind of thing. So again, it just kind of depends on how you play, how good you are, and what you're necessarily trying to accomplish. Then we have your weapon mounts. Now each mount will have a class of weapon it's allowed to use. They are basic and complex. The mount types you'll have available are ballistic energy missile, which are the basic mounts, and hybrid composite synergy, and universal, which are complex mounts. The latter four can mount more than one type of weapon, and each mount has its own icon to differentiate between them. You can see here this ballistic mount has like a yellow square and the energy has a blue circle. Missile is a green diamond. Just a way to quickly identify them at a glance, really. And there are also different sizes of mounts. You have small, medium, and large. And you have to fit the right size weapon into the right size mount. A large weapon cannot fit into a small mount or medium mount. On basic mounts, medium and large mounts are able to fit weapons one size smaller. But on complex mounts, it'll only accept weapons that are what it's called out for. So you won't be able to fit a smaller weapon into, uh, you know, that larger complex mount. So each type of weapon will do a different job, like being good against shields, but bad against hull or vice versa. So you'll want to make sure that your ship is balanced and can get the shield down, then proceed to smack some DACA on that hull. Of course, you'll probably have more than one ship. So if you want, you can have like a ship that just spanks the enemy's shields, then a ship that'll turn the enemy's hull into Swiss cheese and they're working together to take down your foe, you know, or, you know, just make all your ships balanced or anything in between. It just really depends on uh, what your play style is and what you're trying to accomplish. I won't be going too deep into weapons you should pick, but one thing I'd recommend is whatever weapons you choose, you should try and keep them at roughly the same range, maybe plus or minus 100. 
That way, if the enemy is within range of one of your guns, it'll be in range of all of your guns. Otherwise, you'll just kind of be like running at half capacity at certain ranges because you definitely, you know, I prefer personally to stay outside of the enemy's range while slinging some DACA over their way. Except for point defense weapons, which generally have a much shorter range and are more just used for taking down enemy fighters or incoming missiles. Now, this is especially important for your AI controlled ships, because even if they have a weapon with, uh, let's say, 5000 range, another weapon with 200 range, they'll more often than not move into range for that 200 weapon to start firing so they can you know, be firing on all salvos, you know, bless their hearts. But then they're kind of losing that uh, that range bonus from the extremely long ranged 5000 weapon you have there so i i always like to say try and keep them roughly the same there now if you don't want to sit there and pick through different weapon types you can always pick the auto fit option which will just have the game deck out your ship for you but when doing this it's important to note that it can only pull weapons from what the planet store has in stock so your options can be limited if the store doesn't have a great selection if we look here we have the attack fit and the strike fit so we'll go ahead let's slap on the attack fit we can see we get Annihilators, PD Laser, uh, Heavy Auto Cannon, and Swarmers. Then if we go here, hit the Strike. Well, we have Annihilators. Uh, oh, they did change to Ion Cannon, Heavy Auto Cannon, and Swarmers. What I had happen to me one time was each one of these um, selections that I made, they all put the same exact weapons on my ship. So it literally made zero difference. And you can see here the Strike. If you look right there, you can see we're supposed to get some fighters. We confirmed that. Well, we ain't got no fighters. So just make sure you're paying attention to that if you're going to do the auto fit option. You can also use different uh, filters here to kind of more closely key in on what you're trying to accomplish. Now moving on to hull mods. These are super important and can drastically change how your ship operates, but they do cost a fair amount of ordnance points. These are things you can use a story point to build into the ship to get more points back, but only do that if you'll be keeping that ship for a long time. Now, picking the right whole mods just kind of depends on how you play, what you're trying to accomplish. There's a lot of different opinions on these mods, so I'd recommend take some time playing around with them in the simulation station and uh, kind of figuring out which is going to be best for you there. Now, for carriers like this little guy, you have the fighter bays, which you can put different little fighters into. And of course, they do cost ordnance points. So each fighter is good at different things, just like your weapon. So again, test these bad boys out to see which one is really going to work for you and what you're trying to trying to accomplish. So some of your ships are going to have what's called D mods. They're shown by these orange stripes right here. You can also see more in depth what the actual D mods are over under the whole features and mods. Now these D mods negatively affect your ship's stats and what it can do. Now you can restore your ship, which removes the D mods. You can see here it gives you a little warning that it's more expensive than buying a new hull and is usually reserved only for the rarest ships. So this will cost me uh, what, 20000 I think this ship, brand new, costs like fifteen or 16000 maybe. So it's only if you find one of those like really rare ships. Or if you're super duper rich, you know, screw it. It's twenty grand out of my five hundred grand. So yeah, I could probably afford to, really. That is important to note that there are some advanced tactics that uh, the certain D mods will make better, which is stinking nuts. But, you know, hey, if it works, it works. Some of these D mods won't really hamper you too bad, but I wouldn't necessarily pick up a ship with more than maybe two or three, depending on which D mods they are. Like if we come here and we see this little guy, this cute little kite shuttle, he's got three D mods. We can see their degraded engines, increased maintenance, and degraded shield. So in the orange here, you can see what those D mods are bringing down, how it affects their stats, and uh, you know use that to make a decision on whether or not you kind of want to remove them or not. Now let's just finish out looking at what this UI up here has. So it has your top speed, your armor, your hull, which of course varies depending on the ship. And lastly, you have down here the weapon group. So every gun you have on your ship, you can uh, assign it to a different group. You can change its firing mode. It gives you a decent little rundown of exactly what it is, what it means, whether it's linked or alternating, uh, auto fire kind of thing. This can be helpful for your own personal ship. So like if we look at my personal ship for weapon groups on my point defense, you know, we follow down here, we have number four. Those are my little point defense thing. So I definitely want those on auto fire. I actually also too, I want my my auto cannons on auto fire because I just like to blast missiles at guys. You know, it's fun for me. But at the end of the day, really what uh, what whole mods, what weapons, how many capacitors, vents, whatever you're trying to accomplish really just depends on you. What do you want? What kind of ship you're trying to do? What's your play style? You know, do you want to go... 
get in the face of the enemy with a safety override and just kind of blast them out of the water while probably getting blown up yourself in the process? Or do you want to sit back at range just launching broadsides of missiles, shooting them with lasers, you know, being a support ship or whatever? That's why the most important thing I recommend is running that simulation. It is, uh, in my opinion, the most helpful tool when trying to decide what you want to put on your beautiful little ships here. And I mean, it's also going to make you a better pilot. So, hey, two birds, one stone, you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, that'll wrap up this tutorial here. Again, just a nice little basic overview of the refit screen, what everything kind of means. I am, of course, uh, by no means at all an expert in this game. This is just some stuff I kind of picked up along the way as I've been playing Star Sector here. So I do hope it could have helped some of you cats. If it did, slap a like on the video, leave me a comment, let me know if you have any more information or if this video helped you at all. I absolutely love hearing from you cats and kittens. So I'll catch you cats on the flippity flop, and as always, I love you, bye.